ask Mr. McGinnis to please lead us in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today as we begin to take this meeting on, and we do ask that you watch over each and every one here, and, and we give thanks to those employees that have served this district for so many years and have made such a difference in the lives of thousands of children. It's hard to even imagine the, uh, the years and the people's lives that they've improved. We thank you also for watching over our students and hope that they have a continued safe and, and safe, safe year and they do very well as they continue to grow throughout the process of education. Father, watch over us and help us Please, lean thy way in decisions that we should make that would benefit our district. And we ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ms. Buggles, please have a seat. Oh. Uh. I'd like to welcome you to the 2019 reorganizational meeting of the Putnam County School District. And uh, Superintendent, I'm opening the meeting until we choose a new board chair or a board chair repeating or whatever the case might be. So this time, we're going to open up nominations for election of chairman of the Putnam County School District, Putnam County School Board, excuse me. Well, I would really like to nominate Sandy Gilliard to repeat if she would. Okay, we got a nomination on the a that's second. been made. Do we? Uh, you accept the nomination? Yes, sir. Okay, nomination has been accepted. Do we have a second? Second. David okay. seconded. Okay, David is second. It. Any discussion? I just would like to say I think it's a fabulous idea. Okay. I second that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion, second, okay. discussion. Uh, okay. All those in favor of Miss Sandy Gilliard serving as a 2019-20 uh, school board chairman, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Congratulations, Miss Gilliard. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we want to thank our superintendent for officially opening uh, our meeting and uh, making sure that everything flowed smoothly. At this time, uh, I do want to thank the board for entrusting me with another term. Uh, I'll do the very best I can as last time, and I'll humbly accept and will take all criticisms or as correcting, you know, corrective <laughs> criticism. And so I do thank you, and I'll, I, as I said, I will give it my very best. And so at this time, we are now open for nominations for the assistant uh, chair. Co chair. Madam Co -chair, Chair, I'd sorry. like to nominate Holly Pickens to be the vice chairman. I'd like to second that. Okay. Any other nominations to come before us? Hearing, uh, hearing none. Well, it's nothing personal against Bud, but I just, want, <laughs> I think we need to punish her a little bit and let her do a little extra. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hearing none. All in favor? Uh, all right. It's been motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that we, uh, no. No, no, by Mr. David Buckles, that we have Ms. Holly Pickens as uh, the co, uh, co chair. Vice co chair. chair, vice chair. Thank vice you. Chair. Thank you. And it was seconded by Mrs. Crawford. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. And so Mrs. Pickens now is our vice Sorry. chair. Congratulations, and we get to stay in our seats, don't we? <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> No, I don't, she, you, know, you wouldn't have to move unless she, she wasn't here. Yeah. Okay, with that being taken care of, at this time, uh, we are ready to establish the 2019-2020 uh, meeting dates 
and times. Uh, you had I'll that. I'll pass that to, around yes. to all the members. Okay. okay. Yes. I would like to make a motion that we accept the proposed meeting dates for the uh, 1920 19, school year. A second it. All right. It's been. Although there is, um, it says we're having a board meeting on November 3rd, 3230. <laughs> I'm not sure what year that is, but <laughs> I think it needs, it means 2020. Yeah. It'll be fixed. Okay. All right. Is it, okay. It's a typo. Okay. All right. It's, it was motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that we accept uh, the schedule for our school board meetings for the remainder of the 2019 and the 2020 school year. It was seconded by Mr. Bud McInnes. Bud McInnes. Uh, can I make, um, for discussion, can I make one point? Yes, sir. Change on uh, January 21st. That originally was January 14th. That was a conflict with some of our district staff. So um, so we're having one meeting in January, and that'll be on the 21st. Okay, and, th and that is fine, because Mrs. Carmony made us aware of it. Right. All the other members are. And you're for okay the four that. night meetings that has been requested. We appreciate that. that. Yes, sir. Well. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Any other discussion concerning our scheduled meetings and times? And the only other thing that I would bring up, and we spoke about it at the last meeting, was that uh, one of the meetings scheduled for March was during spring break, and we elected not to have that meeting. But if we needed for some reason to call a meeting, we could at a later date in March. OK. okay. All right. And this is just so that that everyone will will know where we are and why that decision was made initially it was there but because it falls during spring break uh, we felt that it you all would be upset if you couldn't attend this meeting because you were on <laughs> spring break and so we felt that especially renee wilkinson yeah any other discussion to come before the board before we vote all right it's been motioned and properly second. Discussion has been had. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes, same sign here and none. Motion carries 5-0. This is our official meeting time. All right. At this time, we will appoint the board member to serve as board's representative on the small school district council. Floor is open. Nomination. Who's currently serving? Uh, Bud me. McInnes. I would like to recommend Bud McGinnis to do it again. I'll second that if he'll do it. I'm fine with that. You okay. okay. With that? Mm -hmm. All I, right. I know Chris Doolin and I spent right. enough and years for, with him. You can okay, and for the record, just so we can put it through a vote, it was a uh, motion by Mrs. Pickens, second by Mr. Buckles, that Mr. Bud McGinnis remain the representative for the small school districts. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes, same sign here and none. Motion carries 5-0, Mr. Bud McGinnis. Okay. We're now ready for the appointment of board members to serve as a board representative on the district insurance committee. I would like to propose that Holly Pickens remain as our representative on the insurance committee, if she will accept. I second it if you will accept. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's been motioned by Miss. No, no, you, you did great. Uh, it's been motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that Mrs. Holly Pickens remain our representative on the insurance committee, and second by Mr. Bud McInnes. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Oppose the same sign here and none. Motion carries 5 0. And Mrs. Pickens, you did do an excellent job. Yes. And you were quoting terms and stuff that we didn't understand. So you're getting it. Jane, so Jane, we, we thank you. Jane Crawford Working would progress. be really good on this next one. No, I've done my term twice. Me too. All righty. Somebody else. We are now ready for the appointment of a board member to serve as the board's representative on the expulsion committee. I'd like to nominate Sandy Gilliard to serve on, as the board representative on the expulsion committee. And I'm going to have to decline just in case some of my relatives show up. <laughs> <as we> <laughs> <laughs> Sandy! 
Well, I'll, I'll resend. That's a fur. I'll, I'll, re I'll resend that. And I'll, that is hysterical. I'll, I'll, I'll resend that, and I'll make a motion. Oh that my Crawford gosh! Serves. I'm no, I'm, I'm not, playing. I'm not. Okay. Because <laughs> all my relatives show up. Yeah. Um, I don't f think I have any relatives, but David, I'm I'm not going to be able to accept that nomination to be on the expulsion committee. You don't tell me, tell her. Well, you said it. Well. You made the motion. Well, I've already, she, her, I put her name back on the floor. For okay. To be on. Okay. Well. And nobody likes to sit on such negative things, but it's something that is very important. But I'm sure I'm driving Mr. Hedstrom and the committee crazy. So. Uh. <laughs> well, we have a couple of board members that have not served on the expulsion <laughs> committee. Well, let's, you get, pick them out. I hate to do it to them. Bud, would you consider it? Sure. I'd like to nominate Bud McKinnis, my dear friend, <laughs> for many years to be on uh, our That's board representative on the expulsion committee, and I know he'll get me back somehow. <laughs> I'll second that. Oh, thank you, David. Okay. I love you, Bud. It's all good. All right. It's been motioned by Mrs. Be Jane Crawford that Mr. Bud McKinnis serve as our representative on the expulsion committee, and it was seconded by Mr. David Buckles. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposers, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries 5 0. See, love me, you, that's Bud. That's the best thing I've ever heard as a school board <laughs> member. All right. Now we're ready. To I will. Do, I will do this. If he can't make it, I will. I will be the second to call. Holly was the second. If I couldn't and make I it could to fill in, so whatever. Okay. So we we support each other. David. Okay. David first, and if he's not in place, call myself, one of any of us. Any yeah. of us, and we'll do it for you. Okay. Appointment of board member to serve as board representative on the calendar committee. I make a motion that we appoint Jane Crawford. I second. All right, it's been motioned <laughs> by Mr. Bud McInnes uh, that Mrs. Jane Crawford serve as the board representative on the calendar committee and second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposers, same sign here and none. Motion carries 5-0. And our final one, the appointment. To, I hate to mention this, but this next one would be good for Miss Crawford as well. And it well, like they I'm, didn't want me at the college. <laughs> they want Bud, so he did it. And um, that's not well, true. <laughs> so you're playing tricks. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Bud McKinnis to continue his fine work on the Adult Education Advisory Board at St. John's River State College. Do I have to pay a dollar? I second. Okay. It's been motioned by Mrs. Jane Crawford that Mr. Bud McKinnis continue his service on the St. John River State College Adult Education Advisory Board, and second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Oppose the same sign, here and none. Motion carries 5-0. And I, and I tell you what. What? I, I would definitely be at your beck and call. Okay. All righty. Okay, we are done now with our uh, board designees. At this time, we will have our presentation of certificates to employees with 20 plus years of service. Come on down, Mr. Buckles. I'm dressed in jeans. Find out pretty good, then. That's good. Okay, uh, we would like to officially say good afternoon to all of you that are here, all of our 20 plus employees, uh, your last but certainly not least, we have taken care of all of our school site personnel that have 20 plus years. Uh, we've taken care of our transportation and now uh, thanks to Mrs. Pickens, uh, 
that pushed and said, we got to get this done, we got to get this done, and we really need it to because of the service that you have rendered. And each of you will be receiving a certificate from the school board, and you will receive a personal letter to each of you, letting you know how much we appreciate what you have done. And just like we told the others, it is true in your case, many times we don't see you to tell you that we appreciate you. Many times some of the things that you've done behind the scene, we read about it in the newspaper and certainly it causes us to smile. And we know that our district is growing because of the work that you do you may not be at the school site, and then again, some of you are there. Our exceptional ed department, you are there in the schools constantly, and our district personnel, you are there constantly pushing in, attempting to make our district uh, known throughout because we already knew we were great. We just needed other people to find out. And so your letter will say simply, whenever you need a lift, repeat these reminders. You bring your positive attitude to work every day. The projects become easier to execute. Changes become easier to implement. And problems become easier to solve. Thank you. You take pride in doing your best each day. Thank you. Your contributions to education help shape the future of the lives of the students in Putnam County School District. Thank you. You realize that by taking ownership of every project, you have taken ownership of the success of the students in our district. We say thank you. Thanks for shouldering the responsibility and putting the school district needs ahead of your own many time and ahead of the needs of your family. Thank you. We are thankful that we have employees like you who never shirk responsibilities, even if it means taking the blame when mistakes are made. Thank you. Your hard work pays off in students' successes, the district and the school grades, and in establishing a positive influence for future growth. Thank you. And your letter states that. And all of the women, you will have the superhero woman with many arms doing many things to make our district roll. We say thank you. We love each of you. So at this time, Mrs. Jane Crawford will read your name, your number of years of service. Uh, Mrs. Holly Pickens will give you your individual letter. And Mr. McInnes and Mr. Buckles will give you, do you have the certificate? Handshake. Your certificates and a handshake. We do appreciate you, and we do want you to stay up here so that we could get a picture of you. It's so many of you, so we're probably going to do it by departments. Thank you. We're going to start with the de Department of Assess uh, Mr. Superintendent, would you come on Assessment and Accountability, starting with Sheila Fields with 21 years. Next is Brenda McGibbon. I don't think she's old enough to have 35 years, but she does. 32? 37? Mm, okay. But right now, Donna Myers has 34 years. We're going to get a picture of this group and then we'll call the next. Oh, was I supposed to be over there? Oh, well. I'll get in the next one. You should have told me, David. 
the, starting with the next group is Amanda Burney. I must have been 12 when I taught her because she has 21 years of service to Putnam County. <laughs> Janet Cobble has 20 years with Putnam County. Is she here? And their leader, their fearless leader, Renee Huff, has 26 years. is possible. Pepper Anderson has 30 years. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Exceptional Student Education Department. Karen Angel, 28 years. Andrew Burnett, 22 years. <laughs> Billy Joe Carmichael, 22 years. <laughs> Elizabeth Corey, 26 years. <laughs> Kim Yetta Hardy, 24 years. Virginia McClellan, 22 years. Claude Riggard, 21 years. Julie Sloan, 20 years. Tammy Smith, 21 years. <laughs> Penny Sorency, 22 years. <laughs> We're glad. And last but certainly not least, Cheryl Woolwine with 26 years. Next, we have the Department of Federal Programs, Pamela Brown, 22 years. We have Courtney Carter, with 20 years. Brad Skelton, with 26 years. And Wanda Wilkinson with 28 years. I know, but I mean on my list. 
She's not on this list. I, I did her name and I know I did. I missed it. 27 years, Marsh. I'm sorry. Department of Physical Services, Deborah Sorigliano, 21 years. Tammy Collins, 23 years. Andrea Ford, 33 years. Pamela Morgan, 22 years. Rhonda Odom, 24 years. Tammy Sheehan, 30 years. Next, we have the Department of Food Services. Gail Dahlgren has 29 years. <laughs> Wendy Mason, 23 years. <laughs> Mitzi Schumann, 20 years. Cynthia Trembley, 20 years. And last but not least, Andrea Renee Wilkinson with 22 years. Department of Human Resources, Sissy Brewer, 24 years. Kristen Carroll, 23 years. Ashley McCool, 22 years. Jackie Smith, 26 years. Tanya Whitehurst, 25 years. Are these other people still in human resources? No. Yeah. 
In the Department of Instruction and Curriculum, Lucy Broski, 36 years. And she has a special little fellow with her. It's okay. Shoo shoo. I should have said shoo shoo Broski. Laura France, 26 years. Wendy Hancock, 30 years. <laughs> Renee Lamoureux, 29 years. <laughs> Renee, I must have been eight when I taught you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Kelly Riddle, 20 years. <laughs> and Terry Turk, 31 years. In the Department of Purchasing, Paula Miller, 21 years. Sandy Scranton, 36 years. Oh, bless it. And David White, 20 years. And in a department all of our own, Amber Simons from the Department of School Improvement, 22 years. I don't think Danny's here. Danny Hood has uh, 34 years. He is in the Department of School Safety. Did, have I left one off? You have, uh, Lucy? Yeah, it's coming. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now from the Department of Student Services, before our superintendent has a stroke, Randy Hedstrom, 30 years. Tracy Piscatello, 22 years. Michael Stevens, 20 years. And Lucia Valdivia Sanchez has 23 years.
then in another department of all his own, Department of Support Services, Thomas Dexter Bowling, 24 years. I guess this is Department of Technology and Learning. Judy Lynn Chastain has 28 years. Come on, Judy. And Jennifer Rivera has 21 years. Our last person probably requires a speech because I don't know if much would happen in the superintendent's office if it weren't for Sharon Cormany and she has 30 years. Again, to those 20 plus employees, you rock. <laughs> Thank you for all you do. This is, this is Janet oh, y'all don't want to stay? <laughs> Janet Cobble. <laughs> now nobody's going to be in here. <laughs> we have a, like a 30 second break. Let me run. Yes. We're going to take a one minute recess. It's now call to order again. At this time, we do have a public comment uh, from Mr. Mark Modell uh, on the FEA rally in Tallahassee, January 13th. Mark Model, President, Putnam Federation Teachers. Uh, thank you, board members and uh, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, I would like to extend an invitation to all of you today and to anyone out there in the public. Any, we, we lost half our crowd here, but most of our crowd. But uh, anybody watching at home or anybody that hears about this, and hopefully uh, uh, we'll, we'll get some press on this as well. Um, FEA has been pushing for the legislature to increase public education funding tremendously. Uh, we're at uh, levels now. We've just it, last year got back to adjusted for inflation. We've just gotten back to where we were in 2007. Uh, even though the legislature likes to claim record public education funding, they don't account for inflation in that. Uh, Florida is one of the strongest economies in the world. We're actually in the top 20 for economies in the world, you know, and uh, so there's no reason why our, our state can't be public funding public ed education better. Um, you may have seen, uh, I don't know if you've seen the uh, governor's Proposals, uh, you know, great, great beginning to the dialogue on, on uh, <laughs> salaries. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go far enough. The uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not not opposed to the idea of increasing our starting salaries. Uh, 
that, that'll help us to recruit people, but uh, it doesn't do anything for our veteran teachers. Right. Yes. It creates problems for our teachers that are in for a few years, and you know we create real problems there. And it doesn't do anything for any of our education staff professionals. Mm -hmm. And none of the proposals that have been uh, talked about has anything for our education staff professionals. Those are all of our non-instructional employees. Mm -hmm. uh, so FEA has been really pushing for the state, for the legislature, to increase public education funding. And uh, the governor's proposal yesterday, I guess his budget came out yesterday, you know, a small increase in the uh, base student allocation, fifty dollars. Again, there's it's something, but it's uh, another another bonus scheme. You know, which is we've had seven of them, six or six <laughs> in the last fourteen years, and none of them have worked. So, um, you know, salary increases across the board is what we need for the public education. But we don't just need that. We need funding <coughs> for our schools. We need funding for you know uh, we're we're way behind. We're 40, 46 and forty eighth in the nation for our salaries, but for uh, yeah. Student funding per student funding, we're we're in the we're in the bottom ten in the nation. I think um, it's I think it's safe to say, Mark, that yeah. public education is under assault. You're, you're absolutely right. Not just in absolutely. Florida, but yeah. nationwide. It's so, so FEA has uh, has a uh, an activity planned for January 13th, the day before the legislative session starts, uh, and we're planning to take a contingent up there. Uh, I want to meet with the superintendent and some of the higher ups in the district here so that we can that is that is a school day and we're planning to take some folks not just school school employees but we want p folks from the public we want parents we want uh, community folks community leaders anybody in the community that believes in public education we'd like to get a huge crowd in Tallahassee on the 13th to show the legislature that you know what the governor's proposal is not good enough and we need to do better uh, I'm inviting you guys to come with uh, if we have good numbers by early December you know We'll provide the transportation. You can hop on the bus with us and ride up there with us. Um, I want to talk to the superintendent and his staff about uh, ways that we can minimize impact on on student uh, on the students here. Since that is a school day, I've got some ideas for what we can do um, so that we can have as many people go that want to go as possible. Obviously, we can't empty the schools uh, unless we decided to close schools that day so that everybody. <laughs> can go. You know, there, there is a problem, but but uh, we've got. Uh, uh, I, I think there are some ideas that we can implement for us to be able to allow a bunch of folks to go to this uh, and, and bring as many people as we can. I've got uh, some flyers here. If you'll take one of those and pass them down so that you've got the information there. There is a little link on there. You can go to, the, go to that website and kind of sign up, so to speak, just so that they have an idea. And I think that information will be trickled back to me so that we can kind of get some numbers on how many folks are kind of wanting to go. But this is January 13th. The rally is at 1.30. We'd hop on a bus here in the morning, head up to Tallahassee. Uh, they'd feed us lunch when we got there, uh, go to the rally, and then we'd get on the bus, and they'd give us some, some food to bring, eat on the bus on the way home. Um, but, uh, uh, but this is... Uh, Funding our future, fund our future is FEA's, what we've, what we've been saying for the last year, fund our future. The education, you know, the students of the state of Florida, they are our future. And funding public education is important for, for our state's economy, for everything. So um, you remember the, we, we did the walk-in last year. That was kind of one thing. This, this is, you know, we, we would like to get tens of thousands of people in Tallahassee for this uh, uh, on January 13th. So, yes, Ms. Gillier. When you say hop on the bus, mm -hmm. are we talking a school bus or a charter bus? This will be charter bus. It, uh, whatever numbers we have, you know, whether it's vans or buses, that depends on the crowd we get. That depends on yes, how many sir. people I get committed to go. Uh, but the transportation, uh, we'll have the transportation ready to go. If we can get FEA's target is to have 15% of the membership of each local go. For us, that would be about 90 people. It doesn't have to be 90 of our members. It's just 90 people. That can be parents, it can be, okay. you know, anybody in the community, you know, you guys, anybody. But if we can get 90 people, if we can meet our 15% target, then FEA is covering the transportation costs for us. So let's, let's hit that target. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, that, um, we'd like to send 90 people from Putnam to this rally. And it would be just an idea to see some of our uh, members, uh, especially our officers for the uh, jobs for Florida graduate that group that's mm -hmm. at each of the schools mm -hmm. yeah because those those students are doing great things Absolutely. and they're learning everything they encounter they're using it as a learning process or a learning mechanism so I'm, I just toss that out there for whatever it's worth I'm not trying to be a, a negative Nelly here I'm just trying to figure out a little bit you and Rick may know uh, I was a happy when I heard Governor DeSantis had made that proposal mm -hmm. but you know the devil's in the details and Indeed. with pay for performance and some of the stuff Rick I mean there was no way that he's going to be able to give that across the board I mean uh, I just don't see it no and I made I actually made a comment um, 
few days ago to the press that I, yeah. you know, I, I commend the fact that he's wanting to put more money in education, but you know, give us the flexibility so we can negotiate um, just, raises for all of our teachers. I just don't see them turning loose. And education staff and our support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. They want to. They want to show us a business model. Mm -hmm. You know, pay your greatest teachers and uh, irrespective of who they're teaching. You know, but. Anyway, I was curious about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what FEA has said is that we, we appreciate the opening of a dialogue and just kind of the acknowledgement by the legislature and the governor that there needs to be more money put into public they education. Know. You know that, uh, know. but uh, so that uh, the opening of that dialogue is good, but we're not we're not where we need to be. Uh, the governor's proposal is is a good start, except for the bonus pay. We don't like the bonus schemes at all, uh, but a good start to increasing our starting teacher salary as long as we can do something across the board for everybody. That's where we really need to be. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I would love it if you guys would come with us uh, to Tallahassee on January 13th. Um, Mr. Cerency, Dr. Cerency, I'll, uh, if, uh, I'll meet with you sometime uh, soon. Yeah. We can uh, talk about ways to minimize it. We, obviously, we don't want to impact uh, student learning uh, by doing this. And so kind of some ideas we've been hearing from other counties are working some things out to, uh, to minimize that impact so that as many people can go to this as would like to without, uh, without hurting students in education. Yeah. Very good. Now, last year you all had T-shirts. Are you proposing a color so that they will know that all the districts are there? I, I will double check on that, but you know, kind of the standard red for Ed is always uh, is always a good way to go. Um, but I will double check and see if there's anything they're looking for specifically for this rally. Okay. okay. All, right. all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. I Thank appreciate you more. It. Thank you. Okay, we are now ready for our consent agenda. We're going to start with Mrs. Pickens. And move to her right. Um, I want to pull uh, F3. F3 Pickens. <coughs> okay. Anything else? Mrs. Pickens, no, anything I'm, else? I'm good. Mr. Buckles. F3 would be about the only thing I would have a question about. Okay. All right. So that one is already taken care of. I have none. Uh, Mr. McInnes? G1. G1. What, what did he say? G1. 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 Mrs. Crawford? I have none. Okay. And uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to ask that we pull uh, F9 for discussion. Madam Chair, also, I'm recused from F9, so at the point when that is discussed, uh, Mr. Jet Ballman from uh, Leonard Dietzen's office is here and will be able to advise the board with any questions that you may have. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. And that was Madam Chair, I'd like, to, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the, unless you've got something to prove. No, sir, I've, I've already We approve stated. the consent agenda minus F3, F9, and G1. Okay. I second. All right. It's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we approve the consent agenda minus F3, F9, and G1. And it was second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes, hearing none. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, Mrs. Pickens and whomever is going to. All right. Mrs. France is going to take care of F3. Okay. Um, I was just <coughs> pulling it because I noticed some of the it, it, the language, like we t it talks about rally, and that's not, I mean, we're no longer with United. So um, rally and some of the wording. So I was just going to try to get. We Tammy, are you, uh, Tammy or Kim, are y'all available to step up and whichever one is designated? Talk about it. Come to the mic, please. <coughs> Kim is our director of finance, and she's filling in for Miss Rhonda Odom today. And you know Tammy with insurance. The okay. supplement had already been board approved for pay, but Nikki from Food Service just wanted the wellness coordinators to know exactly what they needed to do to earn the pay. And that was just an old template from last year that used the word rally. Okay. We're just proposing we take the word rally off 
and then just board approve it that way that people know exactly what they have to do to earn the five hundred dollar supplement. Okay, it's fine with me. Yeah, that's what perfect. is what is t the total of uh, what Wellness Court is? I think it's five hundred dollars. Well, I was thinking for the district, it's fifteen twenty thousand. I, I would have to look. It's around that, I believe. Okay. I have that's on here uh, eleven thousand. My for question, 22 coordinators. My, my concern was the fact that if somewhere down the line that we, we uh, if, if in some of the insurance matters that are taken up, if we wind up going back with, with to United Healthcare or something is resolved in that fashion, then we'd still have money available to pick up um, uh, the uh, Avail, man, Joe, uh, what was it? Albritton. Albritton, no. Mr. Albritton. I think this is separate. Yeah, but I, I don't. Yeah, this is separate. This is separate. From it, it is, it yeah, but I mean, it's money. I know it's money is money is money. And uh, well, I mean, we we awarded it when we had Joe boarded. before. I, I know, I know. I, if and if it's if they've already <laughs> started the year expecting that, I think it would be, it would be up to us yes, to fulfill that. So. I think we approved that. Think we're, the, we're, right. Their pay has already been approved. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this is just what I'm good. And I was just concerned and her, because of the round. wording, the language. Right. Yes. And that's understandable. I'm, I'm and point well taken. I'm yes. good. And what okay. they do is they help with the employees at each school if they have the health insurance questions and other incentives through the school. Mm -hmm. well, it's kind of like having team leaders or other things. Right. 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 Since we don't have an insurance yeah. contact from each school any longer. That That's, that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we accept item F3, supplement pay for wellness. I'll, I'll second I'll, that. Well, since I pulled it as well, I'll second it too. So well, whatever, whoever you want. Okay. It it's been uh, motioned by Mrs. Holly Pickens that we approve uh, item F3, supplement pay for wellness coordinators and second by uh, Mrs. Jane Crawford. All in. What will, the, what, what will it say then, number three? It, it will just say um, without you? rally. It, it will just say everything that's and there. Biometric and assist biometric screens yeah. and, and stuff. Biometric screens mm -hmm. and stuff. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the discussion. Any further discussion? All right, we're ready to vote. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposers, hearing none, motion carries 5 0. Should Thank you, Mrs. Pickens. Before we start F9. Superintendent. Do you want to do G1? All right, we'll take G1, let's, let's Mr. McInnes. Let's do that. All right, Mr. McInnes, G1. And Rhonda Bourne is here from NEFAC that can answer questions for that. If well, it is good to see Rhonda. Okay. Okay, Mr. McInnes. Yeah, I just, uh, I know uh, it's a grant evaluation. Yes, sir. Job. Is, that, is there a fee for that, or is it like included in the grant, or that it's? So it was a large federal grant. It's ed Education, Innovation, and Research Grant. It requires an outside evaluation, so we released a request for a proposal mm -hmm. and through the purchasing department that was open to public bid. Um, one person, one company responded, and we awarded it to them. I never, I have never. This is the first time I've ever seen a scoring sheet for a grant evaluation. So they have. It was they, interesting. They're pretty. Interesting. They're pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, common anymore though. Yeah. So you have the bid, you, one bid only. I understand that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. All right. Motion for us to accept. Uh, yes. I make a motion that we accept G1. I second Grant it. services to CSE Planning Group. All right. It's been motioned by Mr. Bud McInnes that we accept item G1, award recommendation of grant services <coughs> to CIC Planning Group for NEFAC, and second by Mr. David Buckles. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we're now ready to vote. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes, hearing none. Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. McInnes. 
Okay. All right, Superintendent Surrency, F9, and we're, nine, wait till and we're allowing Mr. Attorney. Jet right. would come to the podium. We'd love to have him. And uh, Jet Bauman is here from uh, Rumsberger. Rumsberger, Kirk, and Caldwell. Right. Thank you, sir. And he's okay. representing the board. Uh, yeah, okay. representing the board on this matter. I would like to read a, a memo to the board members, if you would. Yes, sir. Allow me time to read this to you. Um, the subject is protest of award for RFP 54006205, dated today, November 19th. During a meeting held on November 5th, 2019, the school board approved the award of RFP 54006205 for group health and dental insurance. The Putnam County School District received a bid protest petition challenging this award on November 15th, 2019. Per the November 19th meeting agenda, the school board is slated to consider, the ex consider executing the contract for services awarded under RFP 54006015, which is uh, item number F9 on your agenda. Notwithstanding the bid protest, the school board's approval of this contract is necessary to ensure that PCSD employees and their dependents are provided health and dental insurance benefits for the 2020 calendar year. Although the filing of a bid protest petition imposes a statutory stay of the award process, the school board may continue the award process if it, quote, sets forth in writing particular facts and circumstances which require the continuance of the solicitation of contract award process without delay in order to avoid an immediate and serious danger to the public health, safety, or welfare, end quotes. And that's per Florida Statute 120.57, paragraph C, sub 3, subsection C. Accordingly, the facts and circumstances which demonstrate the necessity of continuing the contract award process are as follows. Number one, the PCSD has a duty to provide health and dental insurance benefits to each of their employees. Number two, presently, PCSD's incumbent carrier provides health and dental insurance benefits to nearly 1,600 employees as well as their dependents at predetermined rates for the 2019 calendar year. The incumbent carrier's contract to provide health and dental insurance benefits at the current rates terminates on December 31st, 2019. Number four, the incumbent carrier is unable to provide health and dental insurance benefits at the current rates during the 2020 calendar year. Number five, therefore, PCSD must implement a replacement carrier by January 1, 2020 in order to provide its employees with health and dental insurance during the 2020 calendar year. In order to, and number six, in order to implement a replacement carrier, the PCSD must conduct open enrollment. Number seven, as of the date of this memorandum, PCSD has 28 business days to conduct open enrollment. <clears throat> Considering the incumbent's carrier's inability to maintain the 2019 contractual rates through the 2020 calendar year, it is not possible to extend the insurance benefits currently being provided to PCSD employees beyond December 31st, 2019 without entering into a new contract with the incumbent carrier. Indeed, entering into a new contract with the incumbent carrier would negate the award of RFP number 54006015 entirely. Furthermore, it is highly unlikely that the bid protest will be resolved before December 31st, 2019. Consequently, PCSD must implement a replacement carrier by January 1st, 2020. In order to do so, PCSD must conduct open enrollment within the next 28 days. This narrow window provides just enough time to complete an open enrollment and further delay would surely prove fatal. 
Therefore, the continuous stay of the award process would assuredly prevent PCSD from impl implementing a replacement carrier by January 1, 2020, thus resulting in a loss of health and dental insurance coverage for PCSD employees. The loss of health and dental insurance coverage for PCSD employees most certainly presents an, a quote, immediate and serious danger to the public health, safety, or welfare, end of quote. Accordingly, it is imperative that the school board to execute the award of RFP 54006015 as any delay in the continuation of the award process would result in the loss of health and dental coverage for PCSD employees. Uh, and we have Mr. Bauman here. If you have any questions, he is uh, your representative in this matter. Mr. Bauman, if we were to continue, and if, if I, I, I really see that we have no choice but to continue to serve the needs of our, our employees and proceed. If there is, if this challenge continues, it, it's not going to be of a, of a significant uh, legal impact on us. I mean, it, we've got, we don't have a choice. We've got to move forward and get these, in, these employees covered and do it like Mr. Sarnsey said in the best way we can. I've, I've been called and I know all these board members have talked to people who are concerned about it. And uh, I just wanted to know in the normal process of this, uh, I mean, they, I don't see how they could legally stay us anyway. I mean, you've got, you've got people who have met, need medicine and they need to be served medically. I mean, well, I, and I think that's exactly uh, what the statute contemplates. Um, there is a, a stay when a bid protest is filed um, and there is an exception that's outlined pretty clearly yeah, right. uh, within that same statute allowing the continuance of that award and the execution of a contract. Um, this is also restated in the district's rules. Uh, it says that, you know, where services are necessary for the operation of the public school, um, that that award and, and contract shall be executed um, in order to provide those services. Here, um, you know, as, as it's laid out in the memo, uh, yeah, based off the time constraints, it's absolutely, uh, you know, a, an immediate danger um, that after, after December 31st, there's, there's employees that could be without health and dental insurance. Um, which this district, both statutorily and by the by the unions, uh, the contract with the union has a, has a duty to provide. So um, I th think it's without question that yeah, uh, I just don't see that I, fits the, the, the in good standard. faith for our employees. I don't see how we could not continue on and and go through open enrollment. But that's that's me. I mean, I've done what Rick's doing, and you've got to look at the big picture. And no, the, no matter how you feel, we've got to serve our our people. And I'm of that mindset. Bottom line is the employee, the safety and well-being of the employee. Mm -hmm. This would uh, yeah. how, how long? There's really not an estimate that you can give as to how long this would take to shake out. Well, it'll have to be past December, I would think. I mean, I, I, as far as resolution of the bid protest, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, the, I mean, Florida statutes lays out a pretty clear timeline. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a seven day period after seven after days. filing in which there's an informal res resolution between the two parties uh, where they try to reach an agreement. Um, if, if nothing is resolved, then it would be forwarded to uh, uh, Division of Administrative Hearings uh, where, right. you know, there, there's an adjudicatory process that's laid out uh, for coming to resolution. But um, Based off, you know, the, the minimum statutory guidelines there, it would be 30 days before um, that hearing would even be conducted after after informal resolution. That's and then I mean. an additional 30 days for the administrative law judge presiding over that matter to release a recommendation. On top of that, uh, the, the, the school district has 30 more days uh, to produce a final order on that decision. So, I mean, that would put us you know, well beyond February and people get hung up on the seven day period, but there's really a lot more to it than meets the eye there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it's very, very much within the, the you know, statutory guidelines here. Uh, 
it yet. Hopefully that's been, that's been laid out rather clear for you within the memorandum. Would it be, would, uh, my, my next question for Jay, would it be the, uh, you as our attorney, uh, would it be your recommendation that, that we could continue on if we so choose as a majority and we, and, and do what we feel like we have to do? I mean. It's, no, that my my uh, my I mean, role here in this is invi advising. Well, of, I mean, you would advise what the statutes, that, that the statute says. We're within the statutory rights to do that. Uh, it it would be superintendent's recommendation, as as I think he just you know, stated, um, you know that that it would be uh, it would be in the best interest in uh, avoiding uh, an immediate a real and immediate danger um, by 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 avoiding that lapse in coverage to continue to award this contract. All right, thank um, you. And that, I think that's that's very well detailed facts and circumstances yeah. and, and superintendent and, uh, and, memorandum and superintendent Surrency, what do you kind of foresee happening in this process with what has come up against well this, what do you this foresee being uh, possible litigation i can't comment okay. you know this uh oh i'm saying my main concern right now is that we provide we do what we need to do today as okay. a board so we to we, make sure our employees yeah. are in a place to get insurance but I, yes, sir. again i'm not going to comment on any impending litigation or anything this, of that nature this is just one thing in his <laughs> plate yeah. yeah so um okay anyway i just hope that was clear and and i appreciate mr Bauman being here and again if you have any further questions but i do know that there needs to be a motion made uh, so that there can you can make a decision today about this matter before we can move on because right now we we're, we're immediately okay. stayed until you make a decision. Madam yes, Chairman, sir. I'd like to make a motion that after hearing the attorney uh, give us our statutory uh, uh, a thorough understanding of what the superintendent read, that uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve moving forward uh, with open enrollment and uh, if there's anything else I need to add mr. attorney it, it, and then I just say we move forward do we need to say awarding the contract to well I mean that would be that would well be I, and, the, uh, and 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 finish with uh, the uh, avoid uh, we go ahead and, and finish the execution of the Florida blue contract to avoid immediate and serious cha cha uh, problems for public health and and danger that that could ensue I mean and we kind of made that clear at the last meeting we really we really can't drag it out it's just right. no matter what side you flip a coin on we've got to do what's best for our employees and and Miss Pickens had us some good notes here that was very nice Okay. <laughs> Any Is, further do questions? I need to amend that motion or say anything, or is that good, Mr. Attorney? Uh, I, I'm just here to advise it of what, yeah. legal rights. Uh, uh, Did that cover it? Uh, I he, he can't advise all right. us. All somewhat. right, we have a motion on the floor. We got a motion to Mr. proceed. Buckles. And can you, uh, Madam Chair, could he summarize the motion again? Just to, I want to make yes. sure it's yes. very clear for the I record. Think that we, Read it off number nine. I think that we, well, out of an abundance of caution that we follow the statutory provisions that allow us to uh, act in the best interest of our employees that will be impacted and execute the Florida blue contract to avoid immediate and serious danger to the public health, safety and welfare of our employees and their families. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's part of it. Yeah. Okay, we have a. I'll resent it. And let somebody else. No, make no, no. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor. A second. All right. It's been uh, motioned by Mr. David Buckles uh, that, based on the reasons stated by the superintendent, stated in his memo, uh, the recommendation was made uh, to proceed with the execution of the Florida Blue contract to avoid immediate and serious danger to the public health, safety, and welfare of our employees and their families. And it was seconded by Mrs. Holly Pickens. Uh, any discussion? Any further discussion? We, hearing, we previously dis all right, discussed hearing, this. And hearing uh, none, all in favor uh, of this motion, let it be known by I. Uh, I, I opposers, hearing none, motion carries 5-0. Thanks, Hall. Great. And again, that is passing the, uh, 
on the consent agenda. F F nine. Just yes, for the sir. Record. Unanimous. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Charlie, can we keep Jet? <laughs> we want to. No, we want to keep you. We serve at your pleasure. Okay. And Jet, by the way, is uh, is filling in for Mr. Deason. We've been, in, you know, Mr. Deason also yes. oh, yeah. works as his firm, so we appreciate your assistance in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We are now in emergency session. We do have one item that has come to the attention of the board. Is this the emergency item? Yes, sir. After the Regarding, fact? yes. Madam, uh, Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item, the emergency item number one after the fact additional hours for lack of high school jobs for graduates, JFG teacher, justification, explanation, time sensitive. A second. Okay. It's I'd like been, to ask a question. Okay. All righty. All right. Um, it's been motioned and seconded. Motion and second. Mr. David Buckers uh, motioned uh, approval of the after the fact additional hours for black high school jo jobs for Florida graduates. Uh, teacher justification explanation time sensitive second by mrs holly pickens we're now open for questions i just um discussion wondering questions. are the other two uh jfg teachers going to be receiving this same amount or are they going to be doing the same job duties good afternoon Hi. that is actually being paid for through um Palaka High School's Title I uh, funding. The other two schools are welcome to do the same, but right now that is what uh, Mr. Stout has picked to do with his Title I funding. Okay. Okay. All right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor of approving this emergency item number one, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes, same sign here and none. Motion carries five, zero. We are now out of emergency session. We have uh, no unfinished business to discuss. And we have no new business. All right, so at this time, we will start with our reports. Uh, we'll start with you, Mrs. Crawford. I just have a couple of things I'd like to say. I'd like to um, thank the Department of Human Resources for the wonderful breakfast that and um, ceremony that they provided for the Teachers of the Year and um, School Related Employee of the Year. Um, and I'd also like to thank St. Monica Church for always providing that breakfast and the space to have the um, celebration. It was wonderful once again. And I just want to say one other thing. I really uh, love how many of our schools are posting pictures on Facebook of great things that are going on in the schools. Um, it, it, you know, helps us keep abreast of a lot of what's going on. And I've also really enjoyed Jennifer's posts uh, about what she's doing in their department and, and the teachers are doing um, in these workshops. It's really, really been great. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Crawford. Mr. McInnes. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, I, um, I'm, I guess I'm really big on board with this adult uh, well, literacy in particular with uh, <coughs> ABCs of Putnam oh. and the Imagination Library. Yeah. Well, um, I did see something Baby in the paper. Builders. Yeah. Baby brain builders. Baby brain builders. Yes. About the um, uh, possibility of uh, teaching adults how to read. And uh, to me, it's like a, it's a vicious cycle. We've got, you know, children that are struggling. And maybe part of the problem that they're struggling is because there's no one at home that knows how to read as well. So there's a, um, if you're interested, I'm taking a training. It's 12 hours. And it's with the library system. And they're going to hook me up with an adult starting in January, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. Great. Great. Lucy used to Great. Do it all the time. Yes. And I attended the drug court commencement um, 
just recently and um, some two graduates there they're going on to better their life uh, we attended the Veterans Day Parade I want to thank Beck Chevrolet and David for arranging that it was uh, we saw some great veterans all day little yeah. ones that were dressed up precious and uh, had a, a good ceremony at the river as well and entertainment in the heat, yeah. in the heat. <laughs> and uh, did have a great breakfast like Jane mentioned and um, it was well attended and um, I know everyone appreciated that um, and I want to commend people uh, as I drive back and forth um, interlocking there's just some people that are always there for their schools like Rotary Club of West Putnam Lakes and the um, First Baptist Church was always doing something with Interlochen High School and um, there's one bank, the Community <coughs> State Bank, that always has on their marquee Go Rams. I just want to give them a plug about that. I appreciate seeing that. Okay, Good. thank you, Mr. McInnes. Mr. Buckles. My turn? Well, yes, thank sir. you. Uh, I just, I'm just so happy that uh, we, we finally know that we can move forward and you know that all the stuff we've been through on this insurance just move forward and get things going so the employees aren't going to be bailing out on us and 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 they've got you know some of the calls I've had were pretty heart-wrenching and I know a lot of you have had the same thing regardless of who the carrier is it's going to be it's going to be hard you know it's a tough time uh, you know if the governor would come through with the money he talked about it might make things a little better but you know you can't you can't count on something that may not come so uh, I'm glad we're moving forward with that. I will, uh, I've, I've got some, some ideas for workshop uh, down the road, but I think I'll just hold it today until I can maybe meet with the superintendent and talk with him a little bit about it. And uh, I just feel like everything's going pretty good right now uh, in the schools. I've, I've heard some very great, uh, you know, really good comments uh, about morale and things like that. So. That's always good, but I'll pass it on to Miss Pickens. Mrs. Pickens. Okay, um, I'd just like to give a shout out to the junior ROTC program at Crescent City High School and the um, Marching Raider Band. They had a Veterans Day performance uh, ceremony more, and it was absolutely wonderful. The, the, there were many, uh, students in ROTC that I'd had as ninth graders and to see them get up and speak and read their speeches that they had won voice of democracy and it was uh, it was really a really moving experience and the band was fabulous and when uh, a former student played taps it it just sent chill bumps it was but the problem they're just it wasn't attended really well and so um, so I'm going to make a point of advertising it better next year because more people need to see it. It was ex excellent. Um, I also had the opportunity to speak to the library board in Crescent City. And while I was there, uh, we, we talked about a lot of different things. And as I was leaving, of course, I had to check out a book. And um, I mentioned Dean that the, the came with the Imagination Library. and. I wanted to see if they had any of these applications and they did not and they so immediately the librarian went back she called and um, they made copies of this and awesome. I just explained awesome. to them what a great program it was and yeah. and um, so you know I thought that was really neat to be able to use that and of course you know me I'm going to mention winter sports are here and uh, <laughs> you know, girls soccer boys soccer um, girls weightlifting, basketball, it's, um, it's just a really busy time of year and uh, <coughs> it's great me. to be able to watch kids play and, and do something that they really love. Yeah. So um, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Pickens. Uh, I too would just like to uh, voice my appreciation and thanks to uh, Human Resources and to St. Monica's Church for hosting the breakfast for uh, the uh, Teacher of the Year and School Related Employee of the Year and congratulate all of those that were selected at their various sites and thank uh, Mrs. Whitehurst for the job she does in, in making that a great affair. 
um, also uh, father. Okay, I was trying to think of the correct title. Father Ron did a beautiful uh, little speech about the ego and how he perceived our teachers and, and these employees being the ego and causing our children to look up and ask about them, et cetera. It was, it was just beautiful. And so were the two former uh, recipients. Uh, uh, you, you, I'm going to forget calling names. Oh. Yes, because you will forget. Yes, thank you so much. All right. Um, and, and I do want to comment and, and thank Palatka Daily News for the beautiful article they did uh, on EDGE with uh, the facelift. Uh, re the children they serve are still our children. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just thought it was great seeing some of our former students and athletes, uh, Calvin Murray, seeing him there with representing Home nice. Depot and all of the things and nice. the people painting it was Lowe's, yeah. Yes. I guess I were I do Home Depot. Well, we we'll get it straight, but it's, it's, it's only about a mile apart. <laughs> okay, and then um, adopt a school. We do my sorority. I mentioned it in the past that we mentor the fifth grade students there every second and fourth. Thursday, and when they we first get in there, they try and pretend that uh, no big deal. And yet, when we're not there, they're constantly asking, "When are they coming?" You know. And so we, we're hoping that we're making a difference, especially with the book that um, uh, Principal Weaver had chosen for them. Um, and then finally, a special thank you to the twenty plus. Again, those recipients, but most especially to Mrs. Whitehurst and her department. Initially, we put it on their shoulder to find all of these people for us, <laughs> and they did an excellent job of, of going back through. I don't know what all they went through, but anyway, they got it done. And then to Mrs. Carmody, who helped you with those certificates? Put in them in. Okay, well, I thank those several people for doing that for you. And for Mrs. Pickens, again, for making sure that we didn't drop the ball, that we did what we needed to do. Uh, it was a, uh, a vision of ours, and, and I think it, it did exactly what we wanted it to do, to serve notice to our employees that we see you, via the newspaper, Facebook, or however, and we appreciate it. We may not get there to tell you thank you, but we do. And so that ends my, uh, Mr. Attorney. The Trinity program continues to go along very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I didn't know if the board uh, realizes that the legal department also helps with um, IEPs. No. Uh, Andy's department. Yeah. Uh, just as, okay. to, uh, as of today, there was another IEP matter and uh, we were able to uh, help reach a global resolution that um, is uh, mutually beneficial to both the district and to the parent and to the child awesome. and um, with the goal of avoiding litigation and we were able to uh, successfully um, as well wrap as, up as well as the management. expulsion hearings you guys the did a good job sir. today yes. with that too. Okay. thank you um, I have a number of things I want to share that are uh, good news first of all I want to thank our attorney and the work he does in our community with the Black of Young Professionals. Yes. I know you've been out of town, but I know recently they did a movie night, but they, they are really taking a role in our uh, community, and I appreciate that and all the work you do with that. I uh, also want to thank Justin Lighton, who's filling in for Felicia. She's on maternity leave. She's contributing to increasing the enrollment in our schools, yeah. personally, but uh, she's, out for a, she's out for a little while, and Justin's filling in admirably. And I want to thank... Uh, Emmanuel Griffin from Palaka Daily News. He's been with us a couple meetings, and uh, he's, he's doing a great job, doing a thorough job reporting everything that goes on here. So thanks, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you. I uh, want to do a public service announcement on, I've mentioned to you about the Inside Putnam video series that we're doing. The most recent one was um, the one on Robert H. Jenkins. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And I've we timed had, that. I've had more people say they were brought to tears. Right. Uh, Mike McDaniel in the back put that together yeah, spent about six weeks on that and uh, it was phenomenal and I can't tell you how much it meant to me too I was principal of Jenkins for 10 years 
Wonderful. And uh, there's a lot of things I didn't know until right. I saw that video. That's what people that talked to me about it and how much they loved it, that yeah. there were th they knew about Robert Jenkins and knew that he had been awarded the Medal of Honor, but all the other things yeah. that were in the, yeah. the video. Uh, well, our media guys are really taking yeah, – we, we have a schedule now. We're doing these, and these are both school and community. And that, obviously that was a community-wide mm -hmm. uh, presentation. Our yeah, next one that it. we have already released – and we were on the radio this morning, myself and Ashley McCool, who is heading up the SOAR project. Oh, That's no. S-O-A-R, not S-O-R-E, <laughs> SOAR. And, um, <laughs> okay. It's an acronym for something, but basically it talks about uh, distance learning. And I've mentioned this to you before at all of our high schools. We have video conferencing equipment where our students are learning. One teacher in one school can teach mo uh, two classes at one time with this equipment. So. It, it helps us with our teacher it. shortage. Yes. It also contributes to, um, you know, if we have a, 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 a knockout teacher, that's great. We can expand his or her talents to more than one school. And so we awesome. can see that now on. Yeah, if you go to that video on our Facebook, it's, it's called the SOAR Project, and it's a six-minute video, I believe, and Ashley narrates it, but you can actually see these classes in action. Two classes debating one another from different schools, different times, awesome. I mean, same time from different schools on that video equipment. And it's almost like they're, they, look, they're looking at a big screen and the resolution is phenomenal. It's like, wow. like they're right there and they have a mic on them. And so please look at it and I, I just stress to everybody to- Bill Daggett's, all his stuff is, has come to fruition. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The Jetsons. And we are one of few districts in Florida that has that. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of technology, we uh, we have a robotics tournament taking place this Friday at Palatka High School. I believe this is the elementary group. Friday is like our in-town, uh, the Putnam County competition. Right. Saturday is the one from all over. Right. High School. So robotics is uh, a big deal in our county. And, and um, so if you get a chance, drop by. It starts at 4 o'clock on Friday and I believe 11 o'clock Saturday. Competition starts at 11 on Friday. Right, right. And um, also, uh, just to apologize, I was not available for the um, uh, Veterans Day celebration. I was actually in California at a conference of national superintendents, and I was fortunate enough, again, speaking on the behalf of the district, gave a presentation to those superintendents about our increase in graduation rates. Like and the it, Daily News did. Right. It was well received, and, yes. and I'm just so proud of our county. and. Mm -hmm and the work that's going on with all of our schools, our district office. Special thanks to Mr. Uh, Jonathan Hinkey and Laura France and helping to put that presentation together. But again, word is getting out not only in the state, but around the United States that uh, Putnam County is coming along. That yes. sending him to Europe. Right. Yes. And we're actually in the process of doing a billboard. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, 2019 results to come out, and we're going to do it. We have a billboard already designed that we're going to put up in a major traffic area. As people come into town, they're gonna to be able to see uh, Putnam County's graduation rates and all awesome. that. So, awesome. And finally, I just wanna caution you. Uh, I know you have a copy of the petition that was uh, discussed earlier. I, I do wanna caution you and uh, jet jump in here if you need to, but this is pending possible litigation i would just caution you to not you comment back? no I, I would rather you have mine you, you back. can have them no yeah, okay. you can public, have mine it's public record, it's public, record. All over mine. it's public record you can <laughs> okay. keep it the public can find it somewhere right. but anyway <laughs> but the uh the, the one? one that was sent from uhc i would just caution you not to discuss that with yes. other people because this is pending litiga litigation and i believe that's everything i have thank you very much Thank you guys for recognizing our employees over this uh, long period of time. It was well appreciated. We're getting there. Okay. Anything else to come before the board? Anything else? We are adjourned. Thank y'all.